Oh, this is a big ass file. Um, what did I enter the uh, knowing involuntary plea that one? Oh, I'm sure not guilty plea was entered. That doesn't answer the question, you see. I'm sure a not guilty plea was entered. Well, number one, you're not positive, you're just sure. And a, a, a not guilty plea was entered. Well, it's important that you make the distinction that it was forced by the judge. And don't just end that sentence on a period. Because I didn't enter it. And we need that distinction on the record here right now for clarification. Judge is trying to skirt it and dodge it while being slick. But our hero knows to try and pin him on it because that's what they do. Um, and, and that's pretty standard procedure because it protects all your interests. That's obviously a bunch of bullshit. The last thing the judge said was evasive, and now he's trying to defend it and make it look like he's acting in the hero's best interest, which we obviously know is a lie. It's just him. I mean, if you hear a judge do that, he's just trying, he's letting you know, hey man, my real goal is to try and do what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to make it sound nice so you'll agree. Don't. Don't agree. Uh, no, no, one would, no one would file, uh, no one would enter a guilty plea uh, or any other plea at that first appearance other than... We know that. Don't state the obvious. That's not even on the table or relevant. And not guilty. Objection, point of clarification. I had informed uh, Stephen Todd that um, my intention that day was to plead guilty. I just had some questions and okay. some clarifications as to the cause of nature in the proceedings. Oh, that's just flawless. That is a flawless response. Rarely do I hear flawless responses. That is one of them. Well, I, I'll, I'll note that. Uh, I, I don't know that your objection will assist you here, but here we are. And so if you want The judge just tried to pull a fast one. Oh, I note your objection. I'll, I'll note it. That means absolutely nothing. Just because a judge says, oh, I'll note your objection, that doesn't mean a thing. You he might as well have said nothing and gave you the middle finger. Because that he's, he's trying to insinuate that he's actually accomplished something in your best interest when he does that, when you note your objection. But it's completely worthless. And now he says, well, but here we are. Like, oh, here we are. I guess you're already arraigned. And now here we are. Too late. Too bad. Here we are. Like, just trying to point out to the fact, oh, here we are. It's bullshit tactics. Ah, that's so Yeah, we, we can talk about that. My concern about uh, uh, having you enter a plea today is being satisfied, and it looks like you reviewed a document that essentially says you are comfortable representing yourself. Again. So he's kind of abandoned the whole plea thing. He's like, oh, this defendant's really kind of on the ball there. Uh-oh. Okay, well, let me go back to try and waiving this right to assistance of counsel. Well, as they call it, waive a right to an attorney. Um, well, at this time, I'm still attempting to... If you don't know what I'm talking about, why I keep saying assistance of counsel, by God, read the Bill of Rights, okay? Uh, you need to know the ways of your enemy and what they pretend to respect. So you need to know the Bill of Rights and where this assistance of counsel comes from. Capital A, capital C. determination of whether or not I should um, have legal counsel, but I have not yet been informed as to the cause of nature of this uh, Right back on the meat and potatoes. Uh. Okay, well, well, uh, so I, I, I would move to strike that not guilty plea on March 1st because it was not a, a knowing involuntary plea and okay. it was not entered on my behalf at all. Perfect. Got another flawless response. Damn, this kid's smart. Smart, smart. He's sharp. Sharp mofo. So he's entering, in essence, a verbal motion to strike the plea based on and his very relevant reasoning. That's flawless. All right. And so why would you want to enter a guilty plea if you're not sure about the cause? Of now we are definitely on our path, and so is the judge. Well done. Judge doesn't know what he's up to, and he's trying to dig and find out what the tactic is. That's all he's doing. It's, it's my intention that um, the cause of the proceedings can be cleared up, um, which is uh, showing me some evidence in jurisdiction. Another flawless response. Listening, listening. And jurisdiction. 
Yes, and at the time um, that I would receive or have shown factual evidence of jurisdiction, then I would like to make a guilty and inform the He just punched the judge in the mouth. Okay, he just punched the judge in the mouth. Yeah, he told him what he's up to, kind of in this tactic, but who cares? He, I mean, he knows it. He's going to find out quick enough anyway. There's no point in hiding it. Um, he just punched him in the mouth with that. That's what I want. The judge now highly suspects, if he doesn't just outright believe, that the hero knows the hustle of the courts. He's being beyond effective in his words, what he's getting on the transcript, to point to the fact that they need to submit evidence of jurisdiction, the prosecutor that is, in order to meet the burden of the prosecution. Without that, this isn't a case, you don't have the right to threaten me with violence and even drag me here in the first place under threat of a bench warrant. Right? So now, by saying that, our hero just let the judge know, I know, I know what's up here, and I know how to play these little word games you do too, and I know legalese. Let's see what happens. Our, our office has made available, Mr. Estrella, among which is a police report um, that establishes this offense took place in the court of court. The prosecutor just spoke up unsolicited and is attempting to convince the court that the police provided something and because this happened at an airport, jurisdiction is already resolved. I bet that's what's coming. Airport, now people know the state of Oregon. Okay. Uh, Keep in mind, I have listened to this uh, once a couple weeks ago, but then I've listened to so many recordings since then that you get them all jumbled up. I really have no idea what's coming except for the basic outline. And so the, the, the nature of the proceedings is this is a criminal case. Um, the judge is now going to attempt to define what the nature of the proceedings is? That's bullshit. He is now pulling out an arrow of his quiver and aiming it, firing it at our hero here that says, aha, I'm going to define what the nature is. Then we're going to prove or show that you have been, you, you've been satisfied to know what the nature of this is. And so I can move forward. But he can't do that. So many judges, so many Supreme Court cases, so many Superior Court judges have already commented on to the nth degree, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of cases, that already point to defining this nature, okay, the cause and nature of the charges and proceedings, okay? No judge in this little stupid traffic court or whatever this court this is can say, oh yeah, I know what nature is, this is what it is, and we're pushing forward. Eh, wrong, ain't gonna fly. That uh, alleges... Uh, conduct here in Multnomah County, uh, and uh, it was charged as what it looks like a Class A misdemeanor and a Class C. So he's attempting to meet this nature. That is not what our hero needs. Our hero just stated clearly what he wants to be clarified on so that he can plead guilty, pay the fine, and get the hell out of here. And the judge heard it and is not addressing it whatsoever. Instead, he uses the sidestep tactic to go on the bullshit that he has been feeding everybody his whole career, which is, oh no, it's what the cops say. Oh, you're in this geographical point in this area, and that's what the cops say. Well, that's opinions. Okay, what is that based on? Oh, it's going to be based on cop authority. What's that based on? Your stupid statutes and codes. That's a rule book that doesn't even apply to us because we're asking for evidence of jurisdiction and statutes and codes don't apply. You don't have our consent yet on our signature. This is not... Okay, this is what's called submitting what they, what they claim is jurisdiction to our careful examination because it's always going to be shot down. If they actually had something legitimate, obviously it would have come in a court before this at some year and place and time before this, and it hasn't, so they know they're BS. Do you, do you understand? They know. The prosecutor and the judge know this is a huge shell game hustle, and they're doing it anyway. That's what's going on. Um, that judge Johnston of the Portland, Oregon area. Judge Johnston. Remember that name. He's one of the most vicious criminals to ever wear a robe in such a minor case as this. You'll see. Gary, uh, potential, uh, uh, the A misdemeanor up to a year in the county jail and a $6,250 fine. So right now he's using another tactic, which is scare tactics. Scare, scare, scare. He is mentioning the max penalties. These max penalties will never be enforced. Our hero recorded the entire incident of when he was arrested and on video and clearly 
He was nothing but peaceful and using nothing but words, never agitated, never threatening violence in any way, shape, or form, didn't even get angry. And, and yet they said, oh, no, sorry, now you can't go through this at all. You can either go through this or go home. And when he said, well, then I want to go through this other metal detector thing you guys offer, they said, nope, you're under arrest. Okay? That's what happened. And the judge can't scare him by giving out your max penalties of six months to a year in jail and all these nasty fines over it. It's just another tactic that the hero's going to shoot down. Uh, misdemeanor, uh, class C, charged a criminal trespass. Uh, it's a lower level misdemeanor uh, offense under Oregon law, and it would carry up to 30 days. He says Oregon law like it's just automatic. Well, point of clarification, what do you mean by Oregon law? Because he's making claims here that are getting on the transcript that are just, again, his opinions. This is just opinion, opinion, opinion. We want what is written down. You're claiming that I violated Oregon law by being in an airport, and it's got its own port authority, and now there's jurisdiction issues, and you're trying to iron this all out by giving me a bunch of gobbledygook. Uh, in jail, and a fine of what's the maximum fine for the last year? 1250 1250000 Mr. Morris. On a clarification, is it the court's position that my physical location is what gives jurisdiction? Ah! <laughs> Ah, uh, this hero's putting such a smile on my face. <laughs> so he saw what the judge just did and threw it right back in his face. Excuse me, is it the court's position that the physical location is your evidence of jurisdiction? In essence, that's what he said. <laughs> it's just pointing out the BS. Uh, that's part of it, yeah. But... Yeah, that's the court's position. Okay, let's see what that is now. That happened, that whatever happened, or was alleged to have happened, occurred in multiple... Ah, uh, good point, Judge. You can see him hide the bias. Whatever happened, or I mean, what, it, what is alleged to have happened, they always have to say, like, alleged to have happened, right? Because they're not supposed to have make statements or believe that something automatically happened. That's called presumption of innocence, but of course they never do it. They just hide it. And uh, is uh, alleged to have been in violation of the Oregon Law statutes. Exactly. State statutes. Right? That's a rule book. Where's your evidence of jurisdiction which says that I am subject to this rule book, written down, so I can put it to my careful examination, not just your opinions? In that, in this county, in the state of Oregon. Is there any evidence that these statutes apply to me? Perfect, flawless question. Is there any evidence that the statutes apply to me? At this yes. time. And yes. Really? Okay, this ought to be good. What's what, that? What evidence are you finding? Well, uh, the evidence would be that, that... Now notice the judge is just using judicial reasons. He's not actually holding the prosecutor to the burden of the prosecution to provide this clarification. He's trying to do it on his own. Why isn't he relying on the prosecution? Because he's trying to convince Robbie and get all his cool words on the transcript so that he can do it. If he can't, then he'll turn to the prosecution. The incident is alleged to have occurred here in Multnomah County, and so if you are uh, in Multnomah County and, and allegedly committed crime, you're subject to prosecution here in Multnomah County. Objection point of clarification. If I was a tourist from China, an ambassador, or an active duty of a member of the military, and I did this exact same thing, would I still be subject to your jurisdiction, or would there be another jurisdiction I would fall under? Let's specifically just stick with the UCMJ. If I was an active duty soldier, right, and I was speeding, coming out of the air base, or whatever, would I fall under your jurisdiction? If I live off base and my significant other and I have an argument and the neighbors call the cops, do you get involved? Or does the military get involved? And if so, why? Oh, because of the UCMJ, that's jurisdiction, and I signed to that one. And you don't have my signature, so I go to that one. Right? That's the issue that we're touching on. Under state law. Uh, objection, point of clarification, is, is that a, um, is there any factual evidence that my physical location is the determination of jurisdiction? The hero just realizes that the judge just lied and is using his opinion, so of course he's pointing out. Uh, hello, that's an opinion. Where's your factual evidence? I need it written down, fool. I'm not going to be fined and go to jail because of your dumbass lying opinions. I'm not charging you with the crime. Um, well, that's not an answer to the question, is it? You can, you, can, uh, you can raise a defense that has to do with, you know, where you were. Uh, it... 
we didn't we didn't dispute that 